With the college football season fast approaching, I want to give you guys a watch list of players who could be relevant when it comes to 2023 NFL Draft. Here's my top 200 big board. That's right. We're doing it bigger than Todd McShay. If you want to see my full big board, my full rankings, evals, go check out the Patreon. Links in the description below. I'll talk more about it later in the video. But what's crack a It's your boy Broshmo, just kids you do not know. So, and here it is, my top 200 big board. Starting from the back at 200, Jameer Carter out of Virginia. Now, his testing via Virginia, his 10-yard split would have challenged both Jordan Davis and Devontae Wyatt. His 20-yard shuttle would have been 7th at the NFL Combine among the interior talent. And if that wasn't impressive enough, this dude's bench press would have been top. Top, top, tippity, top. So, like, uh, you you go to the tape and you, you see that strength. However, his, his potential, his testing, it needs to catch up or his production needs to catch up to both his potential and his testing as he only had eight pressures no sacks last year uh he's a guy that constantly gets double teamed and really doesn't have a good way of defeating double teams but he's definitely a cat to uh, keep your eye on to watch out for uh i have uh josh wiley here at 197 i talked about him in my tight ends video a guy i do want to talk about is jackson player because that's an awesome name first of all Former uh, Tulsa defensive interior, I suppose. Now he's on his way to Baylor, and this is a guy that doesn't have ideal length um, or size, but he plays with natural leverage. He maneuvers blockers with strong hands. He's very co uh, conscious of what's going on in the backfield. He explodes off the line, a scrimmage, and just shows great closing speed on ball carriers. Another cat to watch out for. Baylor's got a very scary defensive line. Uh, Jordan uh, Winnington here. Man, dude just needs to stay healthy. That's his biggest knock. Guy's a, like a running back with ball in his hands. Uh, let's talk about a little bit about KJ Jefferson. And just talk about all my mid-day three quarterbacks because uh, you could really slot any of them in here. I got a bunch of guys here listed that could come out, have really good years, and see their stock go up. Uh, matter of fact, I, I, a guy in the same vicinity is Aiden O'Connell out of Purdue. Uh, he's probably going to be one of the older prospects, though, in this class. And doesn't have like an incredible arm but super accurate plays with great timing great precision uh, emory jones we've been talking about that guy's upside for last couple of years now he's there in arizona state will it ever come to fruition who knows through a midday three grade on him uh, malik cunningham's ton of fun to watch at louisville and he's much more than just a guy that can win with his feet he's actually a pretty decent pocket passer but another guy that age isn't on his side cam Ryzen out of utah just balled out last year for the utes but another guy with age not on his side uh nor would i say that he has a uh i would say he has an average maybe slightly above average nfl arm Kenyon slovis you could throw in there as well getting a fresh start at pittsburgh so there was a variety of different guys i could have put here i chose to put kj jefferson because he's a guy that i I don't know if he's going to be a quarterback because this guy, huge, if you didn't know, pretty big, 6'3", 245, great with the ball in his hands, great after contact, uh, but he does have a strong arm. Can he be more accurate? We'll see this year. Uh, when it comes to Troy Brown, he's a former, I believe, Central Michigan transfer, and he's a, one of the older prospects, but just a do-good-everything linebacker. So that's why he's up in the uh, top 200 here. Let's keep going. We got Jordan McFadden, who's been probably one of the most consistent offensive linemen there at Clemson, but he lacks ideal length uh, and size because he currently plays tackle. He's not going to play tackle in the NFL. He's, NFL. he's going to be viewed as a guard prospect, but he's been very good for Clemson. Uh, there's Travius Hodges Tomlinson, who just lacks the ideal size and length to play on the outside in the nfl but he's just been very good for the horn frogs uh think just uh think when it comes to draft stock 
uh, Ardarius Washington, who ended up being a UDFA despite how good he was on the field. Carter Warren, a guy that probably could have been a day three pick if he came out of the 2022 draft. So he's going to be a bit of an older prospect, but I got him in about the same area. Jarrett Keenston, um, this cat has no real... Like in that in that Washington State offense, there's not a lot of NFL rushing concepts, but the dude's a wonderful pass protector, very good athlete, good movement skills. So someone definitely to watch, uh, keep your eye on at the very least. And Keenan Stewart, man, I love this guy's quicks, nice first step. Uh, can actually bend the corner on stunts. Uh, he turns speed into power very well. Effective, uh, just knocking blockers into the lap of quarterbacks. He possesses quick hands and hardly ever um, allows blockers to cleanly engage with his strike zone or his pads. Uh, a guy that uh, really needed a senior bowl, so I can see why he decided not to come out last year. But big fan of him. Hey there, hi there, ho oh there, it's your boy Brushmo, just in case you did not know. So, and the Patreon is back up here, the All Bro tier, $10 a month, you get access to my full big board and rankings, it's a great way to support the channel, great way to support me, that way I can keep pushing out more content, but you will get access to the big board and rankings, and it is one of these things where you get to see me updated in real time if i have any slight adjustment or if i add a player to my rankings then you'll know about it you'll be the first ones to know about it also on top of that i want to start getting uh more interaction outside of just the comment section so i'm gonna pull guys from my patreon to come join uh me on like the we do the college football watch alongs or maybe uh, on the like some when we do live streams for like walk the mock like come in and join me on like a discord call and just kick back and talk football i want to be more interactive also you get promo codes for the merch if you're interested hopefully i'll have new merch coming out we'll see but go ahead like and subscribe if you haven't are ready and enjoy the rest of the video let's keep this train rolling ah rashad torrance man Listen, I know there's a lot of fans of this cat out there. I turned on the tape and I wasn't over, like very impressed with him. Like he isn't explosive, nor is he a guy with tremendous, uh, tremendous change of direction. Like I like him as a box safety only prospect, but those are also guys that don't typically get highly sought out. Uh, Jaden Reed, though, you know I can talk. You know, let's talk Jackson Kirkland. Listen. Excuse me. This guy's getting a second go of it because uh, an injury kicked him out of the Shrine Bowl, and he ended up signing or ended up being able to return. So, I just want to see this guy consistent. Like people might view him as a guard. Uh, he's kind of tall to be a guard uh, against high tier, like high. Yeah, I guess high tier competition, Michigan. Uh, he got his belt run, dude. He got destroyed, and. He just, I just want to see better than, like, I just want to see him perform better. He is also an older prospect, so having him in this, I don't see him going much higher than this vicinity. Jaden Reed, though, man, this guy is a flat out competitor. He is a smooth route runner that shows good concentration uh, and body control when adjusting to the pass because he's got a very inaccurate quarterback there. Um, and what is that, Thorn? Something like that. But his slight frame is probably the biggest concern, as you can see him struggle uh, throughout the route. And I think, like with physicality, I think that could be an issue that he'll see in the NFL. Excuse me. Uh, he's very, he contests the catch point very well, but he doesn't always uh, catch the ball with his hands. 9.2% uh, drop rate, something I like to see get better. And then we got my boy, Oloshugun Oluwatimi out of michigan former virginia recruit or grad uh just a very good power center uh we got uh what else we got here we got we got okay we got caleb chandler just typical louisville offensive lineman very good athlete uh lewis nichols though the third out of freaking central michigan i absolutely love this cat good frame plays with the low shoulder 
excuse me, I'm still getting over this uh, ill like illness. I had I had the Rona last week, and now I'm over that. But now it's like turned into a sinus infection. So it's freaking a just can't get healthy. It's going through my whole community as well. Um, not my online community, my uh, where I live. Like a lot of my friends have been getting sick over the last couple of weeks. It's just wild. But anyway, with Nichols, he shows very good contact balance, good quick feet. He's very shifty in close quarters and is able to find daylight. Uh, might have the nicest jump cut in this class. One of my biggest knocks so on this guy is like, uh, while he's good at absorbing contact, like he'll go down on shoestring tackles. Like Derek Stanley took this cat down on shoestring tackle. We know how great of a tackler Derek Stanley was, but still a big fan. Um, Taiwan Mullen might be one of my favorite slot only uh, prospects in this class. Let's keep this sucker rolling. I got Lonnie Phelps. Um, I thought Lonnie Phelps was the best player on that Red Hawk Miami, Ohio uh, defensive line. And they had Dominique Robinson there as well. Thing was, I never got why the Red Hawks never made this guy like a consistent starter. I think he only had one start in his whole career there at Miami Ohio. Miami Ohio. I think he was their most deadly pass rusher. This guy's guy flies off the edge with just so much juice uh, and explosiveness. He turns speed to power uh, very good. He works leverage well. He displays strong hands and he can mow down larger men. Like, my gosh, I swear, if I'm going to be coughing, man, ugh, this whole video, it's going to be a struggle. But you look at him versus, like, I like the move. I, I'm surprised that Kansas was one of the only Power 5 schools to really go out and get him. But when he faces Power 5 or Power 5 competition, like, I have Minnesota, I have Cincinnati list here. Cincinnati is technically not Power 5. But they made the college football playoff last year, so power five. He had five pressures in the sack on only 24 pass rushing snaps. So, yeah, not half bad. Watch out for this guy. Uh, my only questions are, can he hang as a consistent starter and uh, level of competition? Makai Gardner uh, is a former Louisiana Lafayette corner. Uh, he's... I don't know if he's going to be playing core for LSU this year. I think he is, but he's built more like a safety, and he's likely a safety in the NFL. We got Tyler Harrell here uh, out of Alabama, former Louisville guy, a guy that just because of a variety of different reasons didn't necessarily catch a break there at Louisville, whether it was he was stuffed uh, on the depth chart or injuries. But now at Alabama, we know he's a big speedster, so... Watch out for him this year, Steve Oliva, uh, the center from TCU. Very big guy. Uh, questionable movement skills, though. Riley Moss, someone that a lot of y'all asked me about. And I get it. The dude's fast. He shows a lot of ball skills. He had those two pick sixes against Indiana last year. But he has less than ideal length. Uh, receivers typically use that uh, to their advantage to get separation, especially more shifty receivers. Get the best of Moss. Uh, Moss, he's more of a straight line guy than actual lateral quicks. Like, and he lacks that physicality. He just doesn't uh, have a good anchor as a tackler. 21% uh, percent missed tackle rate last year. Go to the Kentucky game if you're really looking for, like, my concerns with him. Because he had one where Ron, uh, Wandale Robinson just got the best of him. Uh, and then he couldn't even, he just missed the tackle and it led to that 52 yard gain uh and then also there was a point where there was a swing pass to chris robinson on the outside and basically riley moss just read the high low read incorrectly and led to a touchdown so there are some concerns dylan horton at tcu is a guy i'm gonna go over next week like i love this cat i'm so happy that i made bruce feldman's freaks list that was actually a pleasant surprise for me but uh, i'm gonna talk about him he's a New Mexico transfer, I believe. But let's keep this sucker rolling with Woody Washington. I love Washington. This cat in press 
is so good. He plays with a lot of physicality despite being like, I think he's like 5'11", 193. So you typically, you don't expect those guys to play with a ton of physicality, but he does, man. He has good technique. He's very discreet with how he uses his hands. Uh, I didn't love how he was in zone coverage, though. There were some times where he got caught looking in the backfield for too long or looking at the quarterback and he got beat over the top. But still, big fan. Spencer Rattler. Listen, the dude's a train wreck. Maybe Shane Beamer over at South Carolina could rein him in uh, discipline-wise, but like, there's going to be a lot of character concerns when it comes to Spencer Rattler. I know the dude's got like a first-round talent. Like he's got, he's got a crazy good arm. It's just dude doesn't play within structure. Uh, there's a lot of like um, just boneheaded decisions. And then obviously his character. So there's just too many question marks really for me personally. And then here at 156, Florida Edge, Princely. I'm going to get it right. Uman Elin. Uman. Uman Elin. Uman Elin. Uman Maling. Somewhere along those lines. I, I got the pronunciation wrote down and it's still difficult for me. Uh, but he was pretty impressive over a very small sample size. He had 14 pressures and two sacks on 125 pass rushing snaps in 2021. Uh, so now that there's more space there on, or at least more opportunity on the defensive line for Florida for him, maybe he has a breakout. Uh, Jadon Hasselwood was a guy that I, I really liked at Oklahoma. Just didn't really get a fair shake there with injuries and such. Uh, and the quarterback playing being everywhere. But I like that cat. Maybe the move to Arkansas ends up paying off uh, dividends for him. And then you got DeMarvian Overshone, who really, man, he's just... Oh, you love you love his length. You love his build. Just the physicality isn't there with him. Uh, he can get nimble between the tackles, but if those if those blockers lay a hand on him, he's donezo funzo. Uh, missed tackles were a problem. He honestly he's built more like like a box safety. I think he might end up being a safety in the NFL. All right, let's keep the sucker rolling to the one top one fifty here with Joe Tipman, who. Ah, oh, man, I got to him late in my evaluation process, but he was such a pleasant surprise. He has great movement skills, absurdly strong. He can overwhelm guys with heavy hands, and he can really scoop with his feet. He was a first-time starter last year, and you could kind of tell as the season went on, he became more polished. He was a much better player by the end of the season, so in a full year as a starter, I can't wait. Jaron Hall, listen, the dude's going to be in the, I think, like 26 uh, at the beginning of technically his rookie season. Uh, okay, 25, but still, I think he's got a limited arm. Uh, so, like, uh, I don't want to put him too on. Like, he was on the verge of being my my quarterback 10, but I'm, I'm, I'm a sucker for Brennan Strong. But let's talk about uh, Javon Foster and Darnell Wright because they're very similar prospects, kind of, but not really. Both these guys can be hot risers when it's all said and done. Uh, Javon Foster is definitely the guy with better movement skills. You just kind of question, why did it take you so long to become a star there in Missouri? Darnell Wright, he moves really good for a big guy, but that's it. He moves really good for a big guy maybe he ends up being a guard he's a guy that's played a variety of different uh positions there for tennessee excuse me uh jermaine lowell honestly could have been a i think a day two if not an early day three pick last year if he didn't hurt his tricep before the season uh ends up being a grad transfer from arizona state now he's at louisville still a big fan xavier hutchinson i know alex from hail mary sports Huge fan of him. I I get it. I, he, he, he's a very good vertical athlete with great size, good ball skills. Um, maybe I'll come around to him. I'm just, I'm not there yet. And then Noah Daniels. This is the Jason Verrett of this cornerback class. When healthy, this guy is phenomenal. The problem is he has never been healthy. We could actually real quick go down. Uh, go down the, his list of injuries. 
All right, his freshman season, uh, he play, he, he actually played a little bit, uh, saw action in, wait, his, no, he registered his freshman season, and then he saw a little bit of action in 2018. And then in 2019, because of a shoulder injury, uh, missed all of it. And then he tore his ACL after five games in 2020. And then he played only 150, uh, 57 snaps because of a nagging knee injury. Injuries, It's gonna. he's going to be a hard sell. He has to play a full year, really. All right, let's keep this uh, rolling. Hey, Brennan Cox Jr. Man, if you haven't already, go check out the merch shop. You could find it either at the bottom of the video or you could go broshmoshop.com or something like that. Because uh, I got the I Love Cox jerseys. By the way, look at this. This is sick. The all bro uh, vigil or the, the symbol. Get on it, man. Get on it. Uh, but let's talk about Do uh, Dorian Williams. Cat that I probably haven't really talked a lot about over uh maybe I talked a little bit about him last year, but uh he needs this is a cat that's a bit undersized, but he's so good in coverage, but he needs to be a be better uh against the run. And you might be like, oh okay, being smaller, he probably slips off tackles. Not really. Like this guy's a sure tackler. It's he needs to do a better job of just tracking down ball carriers, taking better angles, uh, avoiding traffic. Cause like if this guy gets there, he, typically the guy's going down. Uh, I do have quite like I am concerned when he has to take on literally anybody, like tight ends, fullbacks, um, offensive linemen. Like I kind of worry that he's gonna struggle to disengage, and that's typically the case. Honestly, just needs to add a little bit more bulk to that frame. Now, uh, Jair. Brown's a guy I know was in my comment section a lot. Finally ended up getting around to watching him. And overall, I liked him. Like, he was very good next to Jaquan Brisker. But there, there are times where I'm watching him and I just feel like he's less, like, less good Jaquan Brisker. Like, people want to point out the ball skills. Let's be honest. Like, a lot of those interceptions were tipped tipped balls um not to say he doesn't have good ball skills he does but six interceptions last year i think like three of them were off tip passes uh he's more explosive than fast so he's not exactly ideal like he doesn't possess center fielder type of range and there there will be concerns about his range there will be concerns about his length he looks a little stubby and there are going to be questions can he contest uh, the catch point against larger, more physical receivers. Uh, there, this is a guy that plays with a hit stick mentality. So he occasionally whiffed on some tackles, like 15% missed tackle rate. It's not the worst thing in the world, but it's not like uh, it's not great either. It's very average. Um, but uh, I do like the ball skills. I think he does a great job of playing everything in front of him, and he attacks underneath very well. It's just uh, I got questions. Uh, Zay Flowers, I know, I know, lo people love Zay Flowers. Listen, this, for me, he lacks ideal size, no brainer. Uh, more physical corners were able to knock him off his routes and mess with the timing of plays. Uh, he played more outside in 2021, and I thought there were some struggles against press. And for the most part, he was only a vertical guy. That's all. That was the only way he won on the outside. And then when he was on inside in the slot, he was basically uh, very gimmicky, like screens, jet sweep, and arounds. Like it, things about Zay Flowers just screams gimmick player. And for me, those guys are more early day three. Uh, Dwayne McBride, big bruiser out of UAB, big fan of. Zach Pickens, listen, man, this is a cat whose high end reps are freaking unbelievable and will can can make you think man this is a day two guy no doubt the thing is they're few and far between this guy needs to be consistent a lot of people thought his breakout year was going to happen last year it did not maybe it happens this year a guy that again his high end reps stupid impressive just want to kind of see see it a lot more happen a lot more often uh damani richardson is just good safety it's just good safety um probably like 
probably maybe a box only or split high type of guy, but he's just a good safety. Let's keep the sucker rolling with Jarrett Patterson. Listen, uh, I love Patterson. Like the dude, technically sound, very good, very consistent. However, he's he isn't physically imposing, nor is he a tremendous athlete. He's pretty middling in both those regards. And I think that at least takes him out of the top two rounds, maybe even day two altogether. Um, Cause you're trying to look for these high upside guys. And that's just not him. He's a bit tall for a center. Dude has to work real hard to get good leverage. Penalties were a problem last year, but like from a technical aspect, like the dude's there, the dude's got it. He's a, he's going to be a solid NFL player. I think uh, Trevor Reed again, it's these these uh, Louisville offensive linemen. They got great movement skills uh, and Trevor Reed. He, he got good movement skills. This guy could do actually a backflip. That's just kind of wild. Uh, Jalen Cripper was a guy I did want to talk about. Like this dude's exceptional with the ball in his hands, uh, which I mean, Dude, like he shows, he, he's like literally like a running back with the ball in his hands too. Like he has such good vil, vision, good contact balance, 17 force missed tackles on 85 receptions last year, has blazing speed. Uh, he's just so darn quick, creates separation with ease. He can either tear it off, tear the top over a deep, like tear the top off of a defense, or he can be a yak machine. He shows strong hands, makes act. Uh, acrobatic catches on on the regular 4.5 drop rate in 2021 he has return experience biggest knock like first off six foot 172 you might want to get him get in honestly just even get into 180 would be a big improvement uh also over 92 percent of his snaps the last two seasons have come in the slot so he's dealing with a lot of free releases. Like, hey, might be one of the top slot receivers in this class. Doesn't mean he can't win on the outside. Not necessarily. It's just something we haven't really seen a lot from. Uh, Owen Popo, man. Dude's a freak. Dude's a freak. Just need to play. Probably would have been in last year's draft. Uh, if not, if for injuries kind of like costing him a majority of his 2021 season. Uh, Nathaniel Dell. This guy's nickname is Tank Dell. 5'10", 165. Dude flies, but at that size, he's a little scared. Uh, Storm Duck, another guy that kind of suffered from injuries. Uh, hopefully, he's healthy this season. Uh, Devere Levelson was one of the funnest evals. Like, it sucks. The dude's a tweener. 6'5", 266, but I think he could be a menace as like a 3-4 end. But still, you're probably hoping to get up to at least 280. So... He can definitely put on a lot of weight, but he has a nice long frame. He just explodes off the snap, whether it's like shooting the corner uh, around um, the tackle or just shooting gaps. Uh, he sinks low. He gets great leverage at the point of attack. Uh, he, he does his best work, though, truly as an interior pass rusher. That's where he wreaks havoc. Uh, he's consistently making plays in the backfield. So, again, a guy that probably it looks like he's probably going to be more of this tweener size uh, that does his best work from the interior. So, yeah, that's why, that's why I I'm, I guess, so low on him. All right, 120 here. We got Nick Broecker. I was never, like, the biggest fan of him, but now he moves into guard, and I like it a lot better. He's been tackled for Ole Miss for, uh, I feel like, the last few seasons. And he's he does a good job of mirroring defenders and keeping uh, himself in between the defender and the quarterback. He's strong at the point of attack. He shows really good grip strength. He shows good core strength, uh, good flexibility when he has to reset his anchor. He plays with a nice wide base, shows good pop on contact, very technically sound as well, good foot quickness. Uh, overtly, not that not not very physical uh there are times and again this is why he's probably making the move to guard but out there a tackle where again he lacks that length and he wants to he wants to be there at the point of contact he wants to attack uh want to be there at first at the point of attack so he kind of gets a little lungy plays uh, ahead of himself 
And it's not like this dude's either a killer. He doesn't have that NFL finishing mentality that the NFL loves. So I could see him being a bit lower. Uh, can't wait to see how he looks at guard, though. Could really put him into the day two discussion off of that. Uh, Jafari uh, Harvey. Uh, the edge out of do you hurricanes, baby. I love me the hurricanes. Guy just needs a breakout season. Now with uh Mitchell Lagu uh, there, the former UCLA edge rusher. Uh maybe that happens. For Harvey, he has ideal size, length, he's got the tools, very explosive, just flies off the snap, uh, great twitch. He's just a lot for offensive lineman to deal with so let's now see that turn to more production from him tyke smith one of my favorite slot options in this draft uh if he had a full if, if he wasn't like hurt last year then probably would have been in last year's draft uh, ivan pace you can go check him out on my linebacker ranking video i talk a lot about him uh i got jacob Co cohen and uh dottavian wicks uh, Coven, he's real undersized, coming from UTEP. So, like, I, I let's talk about Wicks. Let's talk about Wicks. That's the guy I want to talk about. Now, this dude, great size, great speed, uh, just super downfield threat. Tracks the ball exceptionally well in air. He releases off the line very well. Uses his hands um, very well to get separation as well. So it's not it's not a guy that just gets separation with quicks, but he knows how to use his hands. Very smooth route runner, explodes out of his breaks. He knows where the sideline is, and he's very careful with his feet. Uh, he has that stop-start ability that could be very dangerous in the NFL, and he could just be a menace in the open field. He has routinely made track uh, catches in traffic, and he's very strong at the point of attack. Uh, he turned 40% of his targets last season into gains of 15 plus yards thing is goes down on initial contact a lot now they're going to be using him a lot more out in space that's what i've heard what virginia has said so i can't wait to see that also there are times where he'll let the ball hit his pads rather than make the catch with his hands so clean that up that's a okay like this this is a guy that watch out man he's gonna be a fun prospect down down like down the draft road all right, almost to that top 100, but not quite. Uh, Javion Cohen, uh, he's your typical like Alabama like interior prospect. Like ideal size, length, strength for the position. Has a nice wide base. He hits defenders with heavy, heavy hands. Could really just demoralize guys uh, with his hands. But he can be a bit too aggressive. Play out in front of himself. Um, play a bit off balance and unfortunately his quicks doesn't really give him a lot of margin uh margin of error you know it's not like he could really do a good uh do a job of like recovering from a lot of losses as we saw last year but again just with his size length and strength it's gonna make him probably a, at the very least an early day three guy uh i've talked about guys like mikhail jones and brandon doorless if you haven't checked out my ranking videos and what are you doing? Go do that. Uh, Tyree Wilson, though, he's always a hot name that we that you see in some first round mocks, uh, and I just can't get around to that. And I'll tell you why. Listen, I like uh, he doesn't have elite get off for an edge player. Like he's gonna be an interior guy. He's kind of kind of, kind of built that way. Uh, so the dude's gonna be an interior. He's not a natural bender either. He's gonna be a guy you want to see on the interior majority of the time and. There are times where he is laid off the snap. And honestly, a lot of people, they will go to the the uh, Liberty Bowl game to be like, just look how much of a menace this cat is. This guy's ridiculous. And yeah, no, the dude was great. I think he had like six pressures and two sacks in that game. Anytime he was matched up with Charles Cross, he was shut down. It wasn't even a challenge. Listen, if this guy's going to be a first, then against top tier competition, other first round caliber competition, I need to see him win some. And he just didn't. So I do have my hesitancies when it comes to Tyree Wilson. Uh, Kaya, Caillou Blue Kelly, dude, absolutely love this guy. He had one of my favorite matchups last year in 2021 when he squared up against uh, Drake London. And Caillou Blue Kelly is like six foot 186, I believe. And this dude 
is physical. He showed the physicality to hang with Drake London in that game. He has a great punch at the line of scrimmage uh, in press, and he shows great footwork uh, off his release to be able to mirror guys. He even shows good speed coming downhill. So, like, uh, hey, man, there, there's a lot of corners I like here that are, like, fringe fringe day two if not day two prospects i think i got a third round grade on um on um on mr caillou blue but like yeah dude big fan uh next next guy i want to talk about up here is mozzie smith uh he was number one on bruce Feldman's freaks list and for good reason like most of his numbers would have been first or second among the 2022 interior defensive or defensive interior prospects there at the combine and he's not just a combine warrior either like go if you go watch his game this guy has the strength to literally walk interior linemen into the pocket or into the laps of quarterbacks and he this dude disengages at will he plays with great leverage he sets an immovable anchor quite honestly and he can stack and shed he does a good job of causing pileups in the run game and he's also a guy that if he can get his hands on you watch the heckles out because you're gonna get tackled he had a six uh six six point five miss tackle rate last year you might be like why aren't we talking about this cat in the first round well, that's a good question. Let's go look at some of his cons because he lacks ideal length. Uh, he has marginal get off, I would say. He shows the ability to disengage from blockers, but there are times where he often just chooses, like, he often chooses just to walk guys back, and that's it. Like, he could be a bit more of a disruptor on the down to down basis. Like, we, this is a guy, like, we could be talking about a breakout year for, right? And that's what's that's what to watch out for with Bozzy Smith. Uh, there are times also he just he gets lost in the fight, and he fights himself out of the play. Uh, he just wants to win against these uh, these blockers, and he loses track of where the ball is in the backfield. So like guy that could literally literally be a massive riser, just kind of got to see it first. Uh, if anything, with his testing, probably gonna be a day two guy anyway. Let's keep this sucker rolling with my top 100. Justin Flo here at 100. Listen, he's played literally one game in college. We just got to see him play. We know athletically the dude's a monster. Uh, Malachi Moore, I kind of talked about it also in my safety video. I, yeah, safety video. Um, just nagging, in, nagging back injury. This guy, I want to see this guy healthy. This is the cat I really want to talk about is Warren McClendon. McClendon terrible with names let me tell you oh uh, because i watched him and i liked him like no doubt right but like he is i feel like no one really talks about him just because he is he just wins he's very quiet like he's got good length uses his hands very well in pass protection shows good hand placement times his punches well uh, shows a good anchor if he has to reset that anchor he does a great job at that uh and just like dude he, he has good mirror and ability like honestly the biggest knock is probably the lack of nastiness to his game the lack of physicality to his game he just doesn't overwhelmingly win any one rep that's just not the guy he is so and, and there's also a lot of this he um in the run game where he just stops his his feet on initial contact rather than just keeping those bad boys churning so there's really no part of his game that's where it's like this dude's a massive liability but there it's just missing some aspects here and there uh so like big fan big fan uh daryl uh chami also a guy that didn't make the list like and I remember I was talking to Alex. Uh, injuries also played a big role with a lot of uh, Chami's uh, being in and out of the lineup. But I was talking to Alex from Hail Mary Sports, and I was like, I don't know if I ever see this guy on the field to defend the run. And the few times that I caught it, I could see why. He's not good. Not good against the run. 
um this guy looks like he might be a passing down only like a dpr which is fine if you don't know what that is destiny pass rush only which is fine because he's been very productive when asked just to go out and get the quarterback 35 pressures nine sacks on 211 career pass rushing snaps so let's see him healthy let's see if he can make his game a bit more all around uh zach charbonnet man probably would have been running back three or four lash in the 2022 class uh and in this year's running back class well, good luck buddy i don't know why he came back man i don't know why Manuel forbes is also a cat i really like uh great length uh dude had three picks three picks last year for pick sixes uh so very impressive paul like absolute playmaker with the ball in his hands it's just i want to see a bit more consistency from him uh this season he will be i think this is makes him he's gonna be a three times like three year starter there since getting to mississippi state so another guy that could be a hot riser that i really like in this class Let's keep the sucker rolling. Cameron Ward. Oh, could be a could have could see his his stock just fly. Just like watch out for Ward, man. He's gonna be a fun watch at the very least this year. Uh JL Skinner. Just nice. He's probably your top box safety only option in this class. I freaking love DJ Turner. And I'm mad that when I did my cornerback rankings video, uh I accidentally messed up in the editing when i was talking about uh tj turner so let's talk about him here dude good length has great pop at the line of scrimmage like this guy is gonna be an ideal press man corner in the nfl uh plays the catch point well turns his uh, head around and makes plays on the ball two interceptions eight pass breakups and he only did that in eight starts in 2021 zone coverage he plays the quarterback size very well he's very mindful of his surroundings as well comes downhill with good burst and attacks the ball very well um thing is it's one of the things uh isn't very explosive out of his uh back pedals there are times where he just got worked into a blender and to be fair it was against guys like chris olave and garrett wilson but still you look at that and it's like okay okay that's something he could improve on in year two as a starter so there's a lot to like with him, man. I'm a big fan. Nick Herbig. Herbig need to get big, but probably has the best pass rushing approach of a lot of these edge prospects. And he might end up being a linebacker prospect. Zach Harrison, dude. You have all the potential in the world. He just needs to put it together. If he puts it together, this dude could be like a, a mid-day two guy. If not, we might be talking about early day three. Uh, Devin Achain, listen, I, I get it, dude. Speed kills, but like you gotta be more than just speed, and I feel like a lot of his play is just speed. All right, let's keep it rolling here. Parker Washington didn't talk about him uh, in my receiver video because I got a lot of receivers ranked, but uh, he just feels like a running back with the ball in his hands, and at the end of the day, it just feels like he's a running back playing wide receiver. Uh, but still, still, I have him here at 80. Uh, there's a lot I do like about him, but uh, some of the concerns, which we can talk about a little bit of that right now, um, is, well, he lacks the ideal height, 5'10". Again, very compact, very uh, low center of gravity. Over his first two uh, seasons, 94% of his snaps have come in the slot, so he's probably seeing a lot of free releases there uh so and i legit have concerns can he win on the outside is he a guy that might be just one of these really good slot guys uh and also put contact ba uh, balance can be a bit inconsistent and he can rattle off broken tackles uh one after another in the same play and then go cold the rest of the game so some concerns there okay at 77 phil Dracovic. this guy we could be talking about late day three it really depends. Is this the Phil Dracovic of 2020? Or is it going to be the like or the one that we saw there returning from injury at the end of 2021? Like if we see that Dracovic, then yeah. He's going to be more of this uh Felipe Frank 
or a Felipe Frank type of prospect rather than him being this potential day two guy. So listen, I got him at 77. We could see him a lot lower later on in the year. Uh, Joey Porter. I like Joey Porter. There's just times where I think he's too handsy and um, where he gets, he plays his assignment to a T to like the point where it's like, if there's no one in his assignment, he doesn't do a good job of finding work. Uh, Will McDonald, like older prospect, but dude's going to be phenomenal. He's going to kind of like, I feel like he's going to test out like a Arnold Ebiketti, a boy, a Mafe. So he's probably going to be more in that range, maybe like early second round. Uh, we'll see. Big fan. Uh, Devontae Brown. Uh, I've talked about him in my cornerback video. He's one of the guys I think is poised for a breakout that could really be uh, be emerge as one of the top corners in this class. Uh, and I have Tony Grimes up there as well, a guy I really like out of North Carolina. Uh, Josh Downs, listen, listen, listen. First off, look at where I got him. 69, nice. Come on, you can't hate that. But I know a lot of people really love Josh, Josh Downs. And listen, the size isn't ideal. It's not a killer. But it's not ideal. I don't think he's like the same guy, same prospect like a Jahan Dotson was. Uh, 95% of Downs slots have came out of the slot. Did I say that right? 95% of Downs snaps have come out of the slot. Okay. I said it correct at least that second time. Uh, like half of his yards came off screens. He was schemed a lot of... Uh, a lot of... Um, production drops were an issue 10 drops in 2021 uh there are going to be concerns man is this guy a slot only can will he struggle with nfl physicality listen i got questions but i love the athlete i love what he can do after the catch uh i feel the same uh, very similar about marvin mims as well so that's why they're kind of the same vicinity here uh nolan smith might be the biggest name like wow you hate nolan smith listen man listen Listen, listen, listen. Like, Nolan Smith, uh, 6'3", 235. Yeah, I hate the size. I hate it a lot. He's lean, and he needs to add strength and bulk to his frame. Uh, against the run, he gets locked up. Uh, he has trouble disengaging. So, like, are we talking about a guy that's really only a DPR, a pass rush only guy? A guy you can only have on passing snaps? Because even when he is free, he takes bad pass uh, or bad... Um, bad angles and bad routes to get to ball carriers. Uh, I mean, he took a big step forward this past season as a pass rusher. Now he's gonna be. Now he's gonna be a full time starter there. But still, it's not like for all the twitch in the world, all the get off. Like he what he didn't have an elite win rate as a pass rusher. So I have my hesitancies when it comes to Nolan Smith. Sorry, not sorry. Eric Gray, I go to my running back video, dude. I gush over Eric Gray. Uh, Jared Burks, this is a big projection on my part as he's a former Albany prospect or a former Albany player, now playing at Florida State, but he blew up the spring practice. Uh, it literally looked like he was how he was at Albany. He's just a guy to watch out for. He's muscled out, man. Like, well, like we saw Jermaine Johnson be this big riser last year. I'm not saying Jared versus a bit of the same, but I'm just saying we could see him as a big riser as well. Uh, big fan of the Iowa linebacker duo, uh, Justin Jacobs, Jack Campbell. Uh, hey, man, pick whoever you like. Pick whoever you like. Either or, Justin Jacobs tends to be a bit more of my taste of linebacker. Uh, got my boy Zion Nelson here at the U represented. Uh, Jalen Catalan would have been a lot higher if not for injuries, and we could go over him because if I'm going to get some dumb comment telling me he doesn't have an injury concerns, what are you talking about? Let me go ahead and just go through him. All right. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Only appeared in one game in his senior high school season because of an ACL. Injury one. Uh, Richard, his freshman season after playing four games, also dealt with a labrum tear. Injury two. Played in all 10 games in 2020 despite meniscus surgery before the season. So there's meniscus, but he played through it for the, for the most part. 
Uh, he played in the first six games of 2021, but had his season cut short because of shoulders of a shoulder injury, injury, and a broken hand. So we got five injuries we're here talking about. I feel like I'm missing one, but I guess not. Five injuries. I'm just saying, dude, there's some injury concerns. So calm down. Uh, big sucker for RJ Moden as well. Go watch my safety video. I gush about that guy. On to the top 50. Got Zach Evans here. Uh, man, I think he's just going to blow up there at Ole Miss. Uh, always been a big Zion Toy, uh, Toy Plo Fetty fan. Uh, hopefully he can stay healthy. Uh, Will Levis, I've talked about why I'm just not in love with him as a prospect just yet. But still, he is definitely a top 50 guy. Like, without a shadow of a doubt. Jordan Battle. Surprised he didn't come out last year. Apparently, he didn't get good projections uh, from whoever gives out projections to these college students to see if they they should go to the NFL or should. Apparently, his projections weren't that good. Surprised me. I thought he was one of my top safeties. I think he would have been like a second round or day two pick at the very least. So, yeah, shocked to see him come back. Uh, Cooper BB, Andrew Voorhees, honestly, it's like 1A, uh, one B, or 2A, 2B when it comes to uh, the guard class here. Got uh, Chris Abrams drain. Looked like a total stud last year. And he was a former wide receiver, now playing corner for the first time last year. Just super good. Uh, Blake Freeland, uh, think Abraham Lucas. This is my Abraham Lucas. <laughs> All right, let's keep this sucker going. BJ Ojalari, freaking love BJ Ojalari, big fan. Uh, Lane Robinson, I really think uh, if he gets his pass protection together, he's probably going to emerge as the top guard in this class, depending on how you uh, view Peter Skaronsky. Uh Sean Tucker is my running back too, big fan of him. Uh, Anton Harrison could also see a big rise uh, if he... Uh, adds that straight like he, he says he has been this offseason uh christian Gonz gonzalez one of the stickiest corners in this class man watch out uh we got antonio johnson i've talked about why i'm i guess i'm lower on him uh he's a guy that he's got a very versatile body type he now will be playing more of a traditional safety role opposed to the slot like he did last year i simply want to see it before i move him up higher so that that's it this guy probably ends up maybe top 20 for me by the end of the year but yeah i've talked a lot about noah sewell and my knocks with him uh and jordan addison as well like i i feel like jordan addison the dude flies is just physicality is his achilles heel right garrett williams making it in my top 30 i got my boy tanner mckee yo i love tanner mckee he is my currently my quarterback five uh, big fan. Let's see. Uh, I know he doesn't have a ton of talent there at Stanford, but I think he does a very good job with what he's given. Sika. Ika. Dude's a big boy. Just big boy monster. Uh, Trent Simpson. Expect this guy to fly up my uh, fly up my board. He is literally the what I like in linebackers. Incredible coverage prowess, sideline to sideline athleticism, great mover. Uh, expect him just to move up my board. He he's my type of linebacker. Uh, Quinton Johnson or Quinton Johnston, huge fan. If you haven't watched the Oklahoma game, do yourself a favor, grab some tissues, grab a little lotion, turn off the lights, put on the candles, put on a little sexy music, turn on that game tape and enjoy uh brian branch uh i'm a sucker dude i absolutely love brian branch uh dude's probably is my safety one uh b john robinson yes here we go 23 i feel like i don't know if this is the highest i've put a running back he could definitely go a lot higher because i have a top 20 grade on him it's just how i sort everything out uh he ends up being 23 he could, he could, he'll probably be a top 20 guy. Uh, I freaking love B. John Robinson. Cam Smith, nice, aggressive corner there. I mean, South Carolina corners, they typically are. Let's go to my top 20. Anthony Richardson here at 20 for me. Uh, he's, he is, I guess, the Emory Jones 
uh, where a lot of people are going to project him in the first round. Let's see if he can put it together this year uh, in his first year as a starter. Michael Bear. Uh, honestly, I feel like I want to put him a little higher. It's just like he's not like athletically he's not gonna blow you away for the tight end position he's just very good very good blocker very good shade mover he can he can get yards after the catch like he's a just stupid good uh here's peter skaronsky i have him at 17 just because i like the other tackle prospects better uh if you don't know why i'm doing this it's because Roger Jones has played all of four games at tackle, while Paris Johnson, I don't believe, has played a full game at all at tackle. He played guard last year, but should have been playing at tackle. And honestly, Paris Johnson, I honestly think he could end up as tackle one in this class, uh, top 10. Like, <coughs> excuse me. Like, straight up, when it comes to, okay, like Peter Skaronsky, Paris Johnson, Project Jones. I got, got them all between 12 and 17. They're For me, a lot of them are they're, they're very interchangeable. Um, it, you're just really nitpicking at this point. Uh, Tyler Van Dyke, though, top 15, baby. Uh, I got Felix Anu DK Uzama, a uh, big fan of his. Yo, someone uh, trying to play me on Jermaine Burden, dude. Dude's going to ball out this year. I'm just going to say, if... Uh, anyone who doubts like Jermaine Burning could be a first rounder or even like a top 20 pick, you're gonna have a lot of egg on your face after this season. If he that or I'm gonna have a lot of egg on my face after this season. Let's go ahead and go over my top 10. So Andre Carter, Isaiah, I uh Isaiah Foskey, I got just very similar guys that have uh, have all the tools, uh, good production. Uh, just there's areas where it's like, okay, they could be definitely, they could become more complete pass rushers. We're talking about guys with a lot of upside. And I had Foski edge out Carter because I think just Foski has a, a higher floor. Uh, you know, this guy at the very least is a very good run stuffer who has very good length that could hear it like every now push the pocket. Uh, Eric Gilbert, listen. If this guy ends up balling out this year, we're going to talk about him like we did Kyle Pitts. That's just how things are going to work. Uh, Keishon Butte, as long as the ankle comes back looking good. Remember, he's had two surgeries this uh, offseason on the ankle. Then we're A-OK. -okay. Now, for me, I feel like it's a top six. Like these guys... No one in this class kind of touches these guys. Keely Ringo, go watch my corner video. I gush about this guy. He, I'm a big fan. I got Shroud here at five. I think he could end up as a top quarterback. All arrows are just pointing in the right direction for Shroud, a guy with ideal size and arm talent. Uh, Jalen Carter is a monster. Monster, monster, monster. Miles Murphy is a physical freaking specimen. I don't know why more people don't include him in their top five. Uh, we already know what we got with Will Anderson, man. This guy's been uber productive for the past two seasons. I don't know what more he has to prove. Uh, if he could put on a little bit more bulk, on the, I think he's like, what, six? No, he's 243, but he's six, four, 243. If he get that 250, I feel good about it. If he doesn't, I'm not hurt about it based on what I've seen on tape. And then Bryce Young, absolutely love Bryce Young. I do take into consideration quarterback value, and that's why I have Young here as my top prospect. I think he's great. A lot, there's going to be a lot of people that are going to make knocks about his height. I get it. It's a it's a real issue. I think he's, he's probably going to be around, depending on if he can put on a little bulk, he'll probably be around Kyler Murray, who also went first overall. So I'm a huge fan, but... Let me know who you think should have made the list. Check out the Patreon if you want to get my full evals and guys that I'm looking at as the season goes on. You get to see uh, basically in real time me adjust my rankings and such and change my evals and all that good stuff or write notes and crap like that. But I got to blow my brains out in terms of my nose. Uh, sinus infection, dude, they suck. I'm just happy my voice stayed with me. As always, until next time, you be easy, my friends. Later.